Hey, what's up guys? C0 here. Today we're going to take a look at the Azure Connect development kit. Um, a little bit of context. I've been working with this sensor in my side projects for more than a year now. Um, as you can see, I have quite a few of them. This is going to be a very nuanced video. I don't know if this is going to be the best sensor for your particular application. But I'm going to try to tell you all the things I wish I knew when I was buying this for the first time. Also, I've decided to shoot this entire video using the Kinect sensor itself. So all the footage you're about to see are captured directly from the color sensor on that camera. Um, there's no color correction, no any post-processing that's been done to it. Hopefully that'll give you a good indication of the image quality you would expect. So if you want to know if this is the right sensor for you, the first thing is really to kind of consider the alternative that's out there. I have a couple of sensors here that I think are worth knowing about. Um, we won't be reviewing each of these sensors in depth. But rather, I think you should just be aware of them so you have something to compare to. First up, we have the Oak D sensor from Laxonics. This is a passive sensor that has two monochrome cameras and one color sensor. Unlike the other sensors on this list, the sensor actually has a visual processing unit inside. So you can run some light machine learning models on the sensor itself. Similar to the Oak D, we also have the Z2i camera from Stereo Labs. This is another stereo camera, but we have two higher resolution color sensors. The sensor also requires CUDA on the host to get a full functionality, um, just so you should be aware of it. I don't have one with me, but of course, one of the most popular sensor is the Intel RealSense product line. If this is one of the sensor you are also considering, please be aware that these sensor have been discontinued by Intel. So this product line is approaching to its end of life and you might not have the opportunity to buy any more of these in the future. If you're only interested in getting the highest image quality or perhaps getting the highest frame rate, flare machine vision cameras might be a good alternative. You can get these cameras in different specs. Some of them have higher resolution, larger sensor, while the other one have higher frame rates or perhaps global shutter. They're also quite easy to be time synced using the GPIO connection at the back. Um, and they also come in power over Ethernet varieties, which might be easier for you to manage. But sometimes a death sensor simply just won't cut it. And you might need to get a LiDAR instead. One of the cheaper solution is a Livebox LiDAR. This of course doesn't give you the color images, um, but you can expect all the nice benefits of a LiDAR. So you can expect longer range, more accurate depth measurements, etc. If you guys are interested in more detailed comparison between any of these sensors, please let me know by commenting below the video. A quick note on how these sensors measures depth information. Generally, we can split the sensors between passive and active sensors. So for passive sensors like the Oak D or the Z2i, they simply just observe the photons from the environment. Um, hence, both of these are stereo cameras because they require stereo matching to calculate the depth information. For active sensors such as the Connect sensor, or the Livebox LiDAR, they actively throw photon out into the environment and measure how they respond. So specifically, the Connect sensor casts modulated infrared to illuminate the scene, 
and then records an indirect measurement of the time it takes for the light to travel from the camera to the scene and back. Um, and you know, as we'll see in a bit, this is the reason why the Kinect sensor fails in particular situations. So with this active illumination mental picture in mind, let's go through all the cases of where this sensor might fail. First up, we have scenarios where we are looking at a subject with either high transmissivity or perhaps high reflectivity. So things like glass, water, um, or even clear plastic sometimes, it won't be picked up by the depth sensor itself because the infrared just travels straight through the material. And similarly, for objects with high reflectivity, such as mirrors and polished surfaces, the light tend to bounce around in unexpected ways and interfere with the results. Another failure mode for this sensor is any material that tend to absorb the near infrared light emitted by the sensor. Very commonly, most material with the color black tend to be very effective at absorbing infrared which means that they often have to be placed closer to the camera just so they are well exposed. Of course, the flip side of placing the object too close to the camera is that you may run the risk of overexposure. So the Kinect sensor emits infrared itself, which means it's actually a light source. So when you have objects placed very closely to the sensor, especially if the object is reflective, this will tend to overwhelm the IR sensor and cause missing readings. This is also why they include a very small stand because the desk surface top will usually cause overexposure when the sensor is placed directly on top of it. An interesting note, um, because this sensor emits infrared, um, it also means that it works really well in very dark conditions um, because it doesn't depend on any external illumination. But this will especially cause an issue when you have multiple sensors in the same room. So the sensors will step on each other's toes because the IR emitted by one sensor will interfere with another. If you do decide to have multiple of these running at the same time, make sure the time synchronized using the sync ports at the back of the sensor. This sensor is also not very well suited for all the applications. The depth sensor depends on active illumination. Um, when you put the sensors outdoor, they simply just can't throw out enough infrared to illuminate the entire scene. And that's one of the reasons why this sensor only works up to a limited range. And of course, when you're using this sensor outdoors, you have to consider the fact that the sun also emits light in the same infrared spectrum. So you sh should expect some interference from that too. One thing that is worth pointing out about the color sensor on this camera is that it is a rolling shutter and you can only go up to about 30 frames per second. So you will definitely observe motion blur with fast moving objects. And this blur is going to be especially pronounced if you are expecting a lot of ego motion, such as rotation of the camera. Um, if you're looking to use any vision-based tracking algorithm, um, perhaps this camera isn't best suited for the application. The last artifact I want to point out is that because the color sensor is independent to the infrared depth sensor. 
um, you will notice a parallax effect if you were to project the color onto the death point clouds. So um, this is because the infrared sensor can see parts of the scene that the color sensor cannot due to occlusion. And if you were to project the point clouds, what you usually expect to see is some of the foreground color being projected onto the background. Of course, that's something you need to watch out for if your goal is to create color accurate 3D reconstruction, or perhaps if you want to use color ICP for localization. All right. I know we spend a lot of time talking about the flaws of the sensors in this video, but that's really meant to show you the nuance when you're using this sensor instead of just dunking on it. It's still a very high quality sensor with very good death maps. Is this the right sensor for you? Um, if you're primarily interested in indoor applications and you need very dense death maps, this is probably the best option that's on the market right now. But if you are primarily looking to use this sensor outdoors, or if you want to use it for localization or other challenging illumination environments, it may be worth considering some of the other alternative that's out there. That brings us to the end of this video. I, ho I hope it was informative and it was enjoyable. Making videos like this does require a little bit of effort. So I very much appreciate the likes and comments. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel if you are interested for more contents like this in the future.